What it is guys, it's your boy Blasphemous HD and today we're coming at you live in ruining my life once again because we're about to watch scary animated videos. Now these scary animated videos are by none other than the legend himself, Llama Arts. So if you guys want to watch the original video, the link is in the description down below at least his channel. Let go. This happened about five years ago when I was 21. Me and my friend Seth got into this app which showed you ghosts. We'd go out ghost hunting but nothing much would happen. Sometimes a dot would appear on one of our phones and it would say random words. We would ask, how did you die? And stuff like that. And sometimes the answers lined up, but it was mostly random. One night, around 2 a.m., Seth suggested going to the cemetery to see if the app picked anything up. I was hesitant, but I nervously agreed. Should have been way more than hesitant, man. Going to the graveyard? Nothing good happens at the graveyard. We started making our way through the neighborhood towards the cemetery. It was weird as the streets are normally lined with cars, but they were empty on this night. We walked down the middle of the road with the app running, but it wasn't picking anything up. We finally made it to the cemetery, which was a small, family-owned one where they only buried their own. Seth And these sound effects, yo. Went up to the gate and started shouting, hoping to get a response on the app, but nothing happened. I was standing in the road, feeling unsettled, when Seth starts yelling, Is that all you've got? I told him to stop disrespecting the dead and we should leave. He tried being funny, saying, Oh, I'll make him show up. And jumped the gate and started stomping on the graves while screaming, Come on, show us something. All of a sudden, our phone said something at the same time. I looked down at my phone and it was there. We both just stood there, looking at each other when ten or so red dots appeared on the radar, and it said it again. When I looked back up from my phone, Seth was next to me. I said, We have got to go. As soon as I said that, we could hear the street lights turning off one by one from the top of the street, getting closer to us. We took off running as fast as we could. We got about halfway into the neighborhood before running out of breath and having to stop. I felt like I was going to throw up from being scared and winded, then I heard my phone say something. It was muffled, but I knew what it said. Being too scared to look at my phone, I looked at Seth, who looked terrified. He nodded at me to get my phone out, so I slowly pulled it out and it said my name across the top. I turned my phone off and said, Screw this. I'm done. We made our way back to my house and had a cigarette to calm down. Oh no, no, no! We were talking about what just happened, almost not believing it, when I heard my phone again. This time, it was my sister's name. Nigga, I've thrown that. This ain't Verizon! Yikes! Yeah, I mean, and then ran. We just stood there, frozen, not saying a word, when it went off again and said my brother's name. I took my phone out turned it on, and deleted the app. I asked Seth to stay the night, but he refused. I can't blame him. When I finally got to sleep that night, I dreamt a muffled voice repeating a word over and over. I started to wake up and the words became clearer. My phone was off, with the battery out. But when I turned it over, it was lit up with the app running. It had a red dot about six feet from me, still repeating. Too close to the end to turn it off. Y'all lucky I'm lazy. Ah, uh, you know what? It's never too late. Never say never. By Justin Bieber. I think this.
I woke up the next morning and went to the bathroom. I had a razor thin cut from my left shoulder to my right hip. I don't know what happened that night and nothing has happened to me since. Needless to say, I don't mess with that kind of stuff anymore. Man. This is a short but terrifying story of something that happened when I was Snapchatting a friend. I'm pretty young, I'm only 13, still in middle school. A girl I really liked had just recently started snapping me selfie pictures, and we started messaging each other for a few nights. One night when I was watching TV, she sent me a snap of herself laying in her bed without a caption. I sent a message saying what's up. She sent another identical picture, this time with a caption saying not much you. She set the timer to 10 seconds so it gave me plenty of time to analyze the picture, including her bedroom in the background and the dark outline of a person standing by her window. I quickly sent a response message, saying, Is that your brother by the window? She sent another identical snap, this time captioned, What do you mean? In this picture, the figure at the window was closer, and I could see a hand pressed up against the glass. I closed the snap before the timer even ran out so I could tell her quicker, Well, now y'all know why I don't like scary videos. Sir, and I could see a hand pressed up against the glass. I closed the snap before the timer even ran out so I could tell her quicker. I said, there's somebody at your window, turn around. She opened my snap almost immediately, and then I didn't hear from her again on the app. I grew more and more worried as the minutes passed. I texted her a few times to no avail. I tried calling her a few times to no avail as well. I didn't know her house phone number, otherwise I would have called her parents. It wasn't until midnight when I was already laying in bed that she finally texted me back. She explained the whole situation. As soon as she looked at her window and saw the person standing there, she screamed. And that caused the person, who turned out to be a 20-something year old man, to open the window and jump into the room. From there she ran to her parents' room and woke her dad, who went to her room to find nothing but an open window. It wasn't exactly a personal story of mine, but it freaks me out nonetheless knowing that the only thing that saved my friend from whatever could have happened was the fact that I was able to see the window through her selfies, unbeknownst to the creeper at her window. This happened a week ago. Up until a few days About a week ago! Days ago, I went to a small, local gym in my now previous New Jersey town called Black Bear Fitness. One day, I had the misfortune of running into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy looking kid, probably 18 years old. He didn't look like he belonged in a gym at all. I had headphones in and I was doing my set when I heard him saying something to me, but it was muffled by the music. Bruh, apparently I need to start dancing more, because even though I was scared crapless by the two previous videos to this one, just listening to some music in my head, dancing a little bit made me feel way better. That's why I'm like, you know what I mean? It, I feel I'm not scared no more. I was already annoyed with this kid, given that he was breaking an unwritten rule of the gym. Don't try to talk to somebody when they're doing their sets. I took my time finishing my set, and then took my headphones out to ask if he needed something. Then he started acting like I looked familiar, but right away I knew this kid was just trying some pathetic attempt at making friends. I assured him I didn't, but the kid wouldn't stop talking to me. I'll skip most of the conversation, but eventually he actually asked me for my Instagram and Snapchat, weirdly enough, and for whatever reason I gave them to him. Instead of just saying something like, buddy, I'm trying to work out, or I don't have social media. After I gave him my Snapchat and Instagram, however, I did kind of urge him to let me resume my workout. He finally seemed to get the message and walked away. Not without saying bye like three times though. That night I got a snap on my phone saying from Sean. 
I immediately sighed and said, oh no, just wondering why the hell the kid would snap me. I you know, oh God. opened the snap, and the kid was in a creepy, weird pose, face way too close to the camera, with his head resting in his hand, and a half smile on his face. The text over the picture was, hey, with two Y's. I muttered the words, what the fuck? For the record, I'm a guy, which made this even more weird. My thought process was, I've had enough of this loser already. I'm gonna remove him and make it clear I don't want to talk if I see him at the gym again. And so I did. I removed him minutes after he sent that snap. I'm sure not even a minute later, again, a message popped up on my phone, saying Snapchat from Sean. I waited a few minutes before opening it. This one was even creepier. Now the kid was sitting up on his bed, no smile, more of a surprised, angry expression. The text over the image said, why did you remove me? Now I went as far as to block him, meaning he couldn't snap me anymore. And that was that. I threw my phone on the desk and sighed out of relief. Half an hour later, my phone goes off saying Sean added you as a friend, and then Snapchat from Sean. He actually made a new account. I opened the snap and felt my heart drop. It was a picture of my front lawn. The text over it, answer me, bitch. The first- Run. Run for your life. Uh, or get buck naked immediately. See? Teach you guys a little something, something about uh, self-defense. Dudes don't like piss, you know? So if you pull yours out in a purely self-defense situation, you should be able to, to get him not to want to come within my five feet of you. You know, actually, to tell you the truth, uh, you're going to have to chase him because he's going to run. Uh, now, in the unfortunate event, that he starts walking closer while you're buck naked, you can pretty much uh, bend over uh, and put your face in between your own legs and kiss your ass goodbye because he's about that life. I don't know what life that is, but he's about it. First thing I could think of was, how did he find my address? Not a gun? Word? Then I realized, Snapchat made that new map feature that lets you see where your friends are. Somehow, I had the balls to open the window to see outside. It was clear out there. I shut the window and the blinds and started considering calling 911. It was the sound of taps on the window. I took a deep breath. This crap got me nervous, man. I ain't gonna lie. And with one swift motion, I pulled up the blind and the window at the same time and pulled the kid into my room by his neck. I punched him in the face a few times before he was out cold. Now I called 911. By the time they arrived, he was awake, cursing me out, promising he'd be back and kill me. The cops heard it all. I didn't even have to make a case. The kid was an idiot. Luckily, the timing of this worked out well because I just moved a couple days ago out of state. Only thing that worries me, I don't want to have to make a new Snapchat account, but anytime somebody new adds me on the app, I'll never know if it's secretly that Sean kid again. To keep it real, man, you should never add randoms on there in general, man. If you meet somebody in real life, if you meet somebody in real life and they're acting weird already, don't give them your social media. Just run. Just run. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. It's your boy Blast from SHD. Uh, the original video's link is in the description down below. 